Hi guys, uh, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to have a look at the infamous Dapol HST. Uh, specifically, uh, I've got an issue with one of my EMR HSTs here. I don't think the PCB that's in this is what was meant to be in this. I'm not too sure. Either way, the lights don't work in one direction on the power car. And I have a feeling that the problem might very well be this. <laughs> that tiny little thing there. So, um, spoiler alert, I'm, fil I'm filming this after I've done it, just in case you were wondering. It is, that is the, what the issue is here. But if you're having light issues with your DAPOL train, and if you want to know how to reverse the direction of your lights without soldering, have a look at this video. Wait till the end for the reversing of the light bit because I kind of missed that out. I wasn't thinking of doing it myself, but um, yeah. She's now running a treat, so enjoy the video uh, and let's go to the track and you'll see what the issue is with the lights. See if you've got something similar. Okay guys, so the shell's loose um, to aid me later on, but basically I'm going to move it forwards and backwards and you'll see the red lights there come on go in what would be the rearward direction but the headlight doesn't there should be a singular headlight on this model so we've got those rear lights but we don't have those lights now I've got the fortune of being able to swap the shells so I know that there's something wrong with the PCB on this loco and it's basically the output from that PCB to these lights um, I've chased the wires back to the PCB. Now a lot of people are going to be having this issue and it's just something that happens um, and what we're going to do is try and fix it. I'm not going to buy a new PCB, I don't need to. Um, fairly confident I know what it is and I think it's a diode issue. But the way DAPOL have done this um, is put it on a very small surface mount chip and it's tiny. Um, now to prove that it is the problem, I'm going to bypass it with diodes itself. So let's have a look underneath and see what we've got. Okay, so I'm back at the bench. I've taken the shell off and just taken the plug out there for the shell. Now, if you've got a dummy in a power car, um, the lights will be reversed, but it's a good way of maybe swapping the shells over and just checking that it's not actually the LEDs that have gone wrong in your shell. So that's the first thing you want to check. For me, I know the shell is good like both lights work in it so that leads me to a wiring issue or something wrong with the PCB I've taken the blank plug out of this chip now I'll zoom in here so you can see <clears throat> I have troubleshooted the problem and I think this is quite common that's why I'm showing you this to this here where it says KL3 you can buy these um, now that KL3 it's a surface mount diode times two. There's two diodes in there. So remember, that's a KL3. I won't put a link to a description of, or I won't put a link to where you can buy these, but if you look hard enough, you'll find them. Because what I'm going to do actually is use diodes. Just use two diodes. Now, that chip I just showed you on the board. So you see there, that says KL2. Well, this one is KL3. So, I'll bring the train back. Da -da -da. KL3. Now, what does that mean? Well, with the board in that orientation, see there's one pin at the top in the middle, two at the bottom. Slide that to one side. Inside that chip, there are two diodes. Now, I've got more than two uh, diodes here, but um, the diodes that are within this chip are Schottky diodes. That means they're very fast at switching on and off, or closing the gate and opening the gate. That's not really needed for lights, but that's what they chose. Uh, the ones I'm using are... 1N4148. More to the point, this is what's in that chip. This is what I'm going to solder on to the loco PCB. 1N4148 Diodes Now can you see that little black band? Well that's negative uh, 
Now this symbol on the diagram is a diode, and that line there indicates negative. So, ta -da! that diode would be like that, and then if we had another one in there, this one's got to go like that. And I'm literally going to take this chip off somehow, I haven't worked that out yet, because it's so small. And this one is going to be soldered from that point with the black bit there. And the, where the black bit isn't, at the bottom here. So it'll be like that. It'll be soldered on the bottom there and it'll be soldered on the top there. Chunk. So they've obviously used that because there's just not a lot of space in here. You can buy these, but um, I think it'd be a nightmare for me trying to actually change it. I'm sure it's doable but I have these to hand so I'm just going to pop these in and see if it actually works I'm sure it will the reason I'm also using these um, some of these diodes have different materials in them and when you use like the bigger ones they'll have like a, um, a 0.6 volt voltage drop across them whereas if you at these little ones here I think I want to say these are germanium Schottky diode type diodes which means they've only got a 0.2 volt voltage drop across them um, that's my hunch anyway. These have a less, these have less of a voltage drop across them. But I won't go into that too deeply. If these work, which I'm sure they will, um, I'll put the part number of these little bad boys in the description for you. Um, and you can find them anywhere, eBay, uh, any electrical places. As with these, if you feel brave enough to solder one of those on, go for it. I mean, if it's broken anyway, what have you got to lose? Okay, so we're like ex extremely zoomed in here so I can sort of get in and around. You probably don't even need to remove this chip, you could probably just solder diodes on it. There we have it. I've got the chip off. <laughs> you can see how small it is. Now at this point, I could probably put a legit chip in. But I don't want to wait for the post. Just like that. Tiny, tiny, tiny stuff. Okay, so... Now what I want to do... without breaking, now, so what I've soldered to is the chipboard. Now if I try and twist anything here, there's a high chance I'm going to break the chipboard by just twisting the diodes. So, I'm going to snip them down a bit, and I'm going to hold one end of the wire of that diode, and kind of try and move it around. I would recommend pre-bending these before trying to solder them on. So that one there, you see it go to the negative and then onto the soldering pad. And now I know I can see my phone struggling to focus here and I'll give you a close up at the end. Right, that one's on. And I've just got to do the same with the other side. Okay, so can we get it? Yes, we can. You can see what I've done there, right? The black bands go to the middle pin at the top, and the bands, or well, the other end of the diode, which isn't a band, go to the other two terminals. So this is pretty, if you like ugly things. Um, let's have a look. Fuck. Oh, I need bigger stuff. That's what I've removed. The KL3, uh, that's cooked, uh, and that's what I've put on there. So I'm going to try the train on the track now, and fingers crossed guys, we've actually got lights. Okay, so we're back at the track, uh, spoiler alert, it works. There's our forward light, there's our reverse light, just like that guys. Oops.
try and hide out some of this light. Uh, paper in the way. <laughs> Now there's only meant to be one headlight on this loco, so that, that's why there is only one showing. And obviously it goes... <laughs> I've basically got the dummy shell on the power car, that's why the light is doing a backwards thing. Um, if your lights were actually going backwards you can swap, I believe, two of the wires over in the plug that go to the shell. After testing the loco on the track, this is where it's going to help you out as well here. Um, if your lights are going in the wrong direction, um, now I could have just swapped the remote wires and just made my day easier. But what I've done, so you know, if you've got the rear lights coming on when you go forwards, and you've got the forward lights coming on when you go rearwards, on this plug, the white and the red, swap them around. Okay? Because the middle one there is the common, and then these are the two like lights forwards and backwards whichever way around it is so if you switch them around on this one particularly um, it goes the right way now so I, I got confused because the dummy I've got has actually goes the same way as this so I've just had to reverse the direction of the lights on this one to make it look make it all work properly so yeah if you're in doubt you can literally I'm not going to take these out because they're they're limited on, on use really, I, I hate disconnecting these. These little bits here, these plastic bits, get a blade under one of them and lift it up and the wire pulls out the back and they can put it in the other side and then put, you know, do vice versa for the other side. So we now have the lights working, they're working in the correct direction. It's all OEM, it's, it's as it would have been. Um, I'm choosing to use sellotape just around here it's a very thin way of protecting the wires. If I use anything thicker than sellotape, um, I'm going to cause issues with just getting access to things or, or putting the shell on, to be honest. That bit of tape needs a better bit of tape, doesn't it? So, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to tape this up so it's safe and uh, we'll give it a run around the track and see what we got. Well, that's it guys thank you very much for watching i hope this has helped um I'm, just remember though um doing this is at your own risk really i uh, kind of know enough to be dangerous with electronics so this is how i've done it and it works just a, a treat um all i would say is something to be mindful of is your overall track voltage now these 1n4148 diodes that i've just used I don't know what that upper voltage limit is. My track is on 12 volts, so that's sort of like the standard of electronics. That's fine. I know they're going to be okay for what I'm doing uh, with them. If you're running a 16 volt or higher um, track voltage, chances are that might be why your LED is blue in the first place. But more to the point, you need to just check that these diodes will have that upper voltage, um, to, so they won't blow again. But worst case scenario, the diode blows again, you know, at least it worked for a brief while, and then you kind of know why. Um, but I'll put the I'll put the picture up now for you again of the, the KL3 is the one that you want to be looking at there. That's how the diodes are wired, and you can wire exactly what I've done. In fact, you can do exactly what I've done, and it'll work. You know, it's proven you can use different uh, diodes, probably even smaller ones, or you can even get the actual IC chip itself. Um, but at the end of the day, it works. 
um, I've shown you how to do it, have a go. You know, if, if it's broken already, really what's going to be the worst case scenario there, you know. So uh, you could also actually put wires onto those solder pads so you've got a flexible join and put the diode somewhere else off the chipboard. I've just chosen to do it this way because um, it kind of worked. So if you enjoyed this video, thank you very much. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. And I hope this video helps. I do think this is going to help some of you guys out because it seems to be a dap old PCB issue. But now you know how to bypass it. So <laughs> thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.